Hi, Sagittarius. This is Jeffrey. This is Ripe Color. And this is your reading. I'm going to fix this a little bit. There we go. This is your reading for the week of March 14th through the 21st. I remembered. <laughs> I've been doing them all day. And then, you know, like every single video is like, what's the date? Okay. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, comment, press the bell for notifications. Uh, I'm offering 30-minute uh, readings for $30. All the information is below. What's going on with my fiery friends? What's going on with my fiery friends? You know, I, so many of the Sagittarius's, uh, Sagittarians, Sagittarius's, Sagittarius's, I've known, have been... Um, really musical, really musical. And um, I really love music, but I can carry a tune, that, that I can do. I can carry a tune, but uh, I can't really sing. I mean, I kind of can, but I, you know. And I would love to be able to play an instrument. That would be so miraculous. I mean, maybe if I tried harder, but I just find it so astounding. So um, what a gift. What a gift. So if you're a musician, God bless you. God bless you. You bring so much joy to us. All right. um, I said all my marketing things, I suppose. Okay. The Nine of Cups, the Five of Cups, the Hermit. That's interesting. So the Nine of Cups is um, a wonderful card. This is like the promise fulfilled in a way, you know, the, it's the wish card, it's the attainment. This is actually, okay. This is like a soul searching week for you. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Because you get the nine, so the nine is attainment. This is like considered the wish card. You get, you know, your wish. You got what you wanted, and it's emotionally fulfilling. Um, there's also for me, there's like a little bit of a rainbow in here. So it's like the promise was fulfilled. Then you get the five and the five is about change, but this card, you know, it's a little bit about grief, loss. So okay, so that being said, five is about change though. And the change is, you know, what are you concentrating on? So five uh, fives, all fives are always really about being the precipice because it's one through ten in the minors. So, you know, one is the beginning and then 10 is the completion. So the five is always that place where it's like, well, am I going to move forward? Am I going to look back? Am I going to go two steps? Am I going to go one step back to go two steps forward? There's always that choice in the five. You know, I don't believe in um, this sense of um, fatalism when it comes to the horoscope and it comes to the chart you know, an astrology chart or when it comes to Tarot, I, I don't, you know, it, it just lays out possibility, it lays out energy that's around that you can get to, you know, work with, right? I don't believe in, oh, well, you know, this card came up and it absolutely means that. I, that's insane. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> okay. You can agree with me or not agree with me, you know, whatever. Then uh, we get the hermit and the hermit is really um, deep soul searching, not only deep soul searching, but coming to the realization, the deep realization of um, one's soul. So I, I feel like I feel like it's question time. It's like an interior question time. I, th 
I, I really dreamed of getting and being and doing this. And now it's here or I've attained it or I can see myself attaining it or feel myself attaining it. And I'm like, this isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I wanted. Maybe I put in the um, request incorrectly. Or maybe uh, it is what I, I thought I wanted. And now that I have it, it's like, this isn't all it's cracked up to be. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, I really want this relationship with this person and blah, blah, blah. And then you get there and then you realize it's like, this is more than I thought it would be. You know, it's like, it comes with problems attached. It's like, uh, they're not who I thought they were. Maybe I'm not who I thought I was. Um, or, you know, oh, I really want that job. It sounds really good on paper. You get the job and you're like, this is a horrible place to work. I hate this place. Or um, it might re look really good from the outside, but on the inside doing the work is really not fulfilling. Something like that. I feel like there's this sort of realization that comes through and then you need to like go back to the drawing board. That's what this is about. You know, you go back to the drawing board and say, what's the most important thing to me? No. So it's really easy to say, oh, I really want um, to be really wealthy and, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wanting to be really wealthy. I, I want us all to be really wealthy. I think that'd be fantastic if everybody was rich, right? Everybody's rich and everyone's spending money all over the place. And, and you know, we're all bombarded with money. Like it's raining. Pennies from heaven. Um, And then maybe, you know, you get that certain amount of money, you get that job or blah, 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 or that degree and realize this isn't all it's cracked up to be. This, you know, I thought that through attaining this certain thing that would make me happy. And then you come to realize that being happy has nothing to do with whether you attained a certain amount of money, a relationship, um, a, a job, a degree, uh, a piece of paper that says, or a business card that says, I'm the big kahuna. So what is it? What is it that's going to lead you that's going to guide you what does your soul want maybe um you want peace of mind maybe you want health maybe you want um tranquility a sense of balance maybe you do want money maybe you know you uh thought that, uh oh well doing this you know like very PC job was going to be really uh, fulfilling. And what you realize is that it's a soul sucker. It's like, I got skills. I need to go out and get make some money. Enough of this. You know, it could be that. I feel like there's a real deep soul searching about what do I want? What would serve me? What would serve me and the people around me best? I feel like that's what's going on. It's it's kind of it's not exactly a lolly da week. Okay. So that all that being said, all that being said, it's very important 
to be compassionate to yourself. I think that maybe the most profound lesson, maybe the most profound lesson for me, and I think for a lot of us, you know, I'm not just saying this just to say it, is can I accept and love myself with all my um, uh, mistakes, with all my screw ups, with all my uh, imperfections? Can I come to a state and a place of loving myself if I'm fat or if I'm skinny or if um, I've been mean or if I've been jealous or if I've been resentful or blah, 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 blah. Can I, you know, like say, I love you anyway. You know, you're not perfect, but I like having you around. You know, how about some cake? So you screwed up again. You know, at least you did it with flair. <laughs> so, you know, maybe there's something that you attained. And then you realize there wasn't all that you hoped or thought it would be. And you've got to go in and look. But at the same time, don't beat yourself up. You know, sometimes we, we go after these goals and it seems like, oh. And then it's like, Oh, but I've spent 20 years doing that. And, you know, wow, I wasted my time. And um, I think really at the end of the day is can you find compassion for yourself? That's what deep knowledge is. Deep knowledge is understanding yourself completely with all the things that you do that were messed up, that were mistakes and saying, you know, put your arm around your own shoulder and say, it's okay. We'll win the next one. It's okay. It's okay. Let's go have some apple pie or something, right? Why don't we buy some flowers? Why don't we take a bath? Why don't we uh, sing a song? That's my message. That's my message. Blessings to you.